Let's have a look at sketching a slightly different cubic. And this cubic is only going to have one stationary point. And we're going to have a look at that. So consider the function f of x equals x to the 3 minus 6x squared plus 12x minus 9. Use calculus to locate the coordinates of any stationary points and determine their nature. So let's first of all work out. So a stationary point is any point f dash of x where f dash of x is equal to 0. So let's work out f dash of x. 3x squared minus 2 times 6 x to the 1 plus 12 and minus 9 derives to nothing. So the derivative we get is minus 3x squared minus 12x plus 12. And we're solving it for when it's equal to 0. So f dash of x is equal to 0. And now we're going to factorize the right hand side. It has a common factor of 3. So let's get that out. And now we're looking for something that multiplies to 4 and adds to negative 4. The solution being minus 2 and minus 2. And so since it's a monarch, we can directly factorize. And in this case, we've only got the one solution. So... We've only got one solution here, which is that x must be equal to minus 2. So the first thing we want to do is um, actually classify this. We know this is a stationary point because the gradient's equal to 0. What kind of stationary point is it? So let's do one of those tables up. So the suggestion is always to choose a point to the left of it and a point to the right to it. So I've chosen negative 3 to the point to the left and negative 1 to the point to the right. We know that the gradient at negative 2 is 0. Let's work out the gradient at negative 3 and negative 1. I'm going to use the factorised form because it's a little bit easier to substitute in with. Alrighty, so we've got 125. So it's a positive gradient beforehand. Let's try negative 1. Alrighty, in this case, we're going to get... Uh, in this case, it's going to be 27, um, which is also positive. So that means we're going to get something which is going to have positive slope, flat slope, positive slope. And that, when you combine them all together, is going to look like a positive point of inflection. So it is a point of inflection. So it's still a stationary point. It is just that it is neither a minimum nor a maximum. It is a point of inflection. Alrighty. So now that we've classified our one point, now let's find out its y partner. So let's work out the y partner. So we're looking at f of negative 2. Okay, so we get negative 8, negative 24, negative 24, negative 9. And we get negative 65. So what this tells us is that there is a point negative 2, negative 65, which is a point of inflection, and in particular an increasing point of inflection. Alrighty, but now if I wanted to actually graph this cubic, what am I actually going to have to do? And B, that's what it's asking us to do, showing all key features. Well, we know the only stationary point. The only other thing that we're going to be looking for now is going to be our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. Alrighty, so the first thing that we're going to be thinking about is what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So our y-int is just going to be equal to negative 9. Because we've got 0 plus, minus 0, plus 0, minus 9. So that's the only term that survives. Alrighty, let's have a think about our x-intercept where we need to factorise. So in order to factorise f of x, we need to think of things that could be potential integer factors. So x could be equal to any of the factors of minus 9. So that's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. So we're going to try a few of these and see what we get. So after a bit of trial and error, substituting each of these, we found out that the only one that worked was f equal to 3. So x equal to 3 is in fact equal to 0. Therefore, x equals 3 is a root. Therefore, x minus 3 is a factor. Time to do some long division of this cubic. First factor is x squared, and we're left with minus, minus 3x squared plus 12x minus 9. 
and the common factor we then find is minus 3x and we subtract off that to leave us with 3x minus 9 and the common factor there is 3. So the remainder is 3 and we can see that we get 3x minus 9 when we multiply through and so it all works out we get no remainder which means we've done it all correctly. So our factorized form is now so there's our factorized form of the cubic. One thing that we need to check is see if we can factorize this section right here, the quadratic part. So we can do a quick t-chart to have a think. And we can think about it. The only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. And no matter whether they're both positive or they're both negative, they're not going to add up to negative 3. So the t-chart doesn't work. The next thing to do um, is to think about um, solving using the quadratic formula. So I always look at doing the discriminant first. So it's b squared minus 4ac and seeing what this is equal to. So substituting in. Which is negative 3. The, when the discriminant is less than 0, there are no solutions. That means that there is only one root, and the only root is at x equals 3. So when it comes to our sketch, we know our y-intercept, we know our point of inflection, and we know the one and only x-intercept, and so we can now go through and sketch our graph. There's our x-intercept, our y-intercept, and our point of inflection. Now it's an increasing point of inflection, so it's going to look something like that. And since this is a sketch, we don't have to worry too much about the scale. Obviously, this could be drawn a lot better than this, seeing as they're negative 9 and negative 65 are very close to each other. This is my slightly refined sketch. Not that it's much refined. Let's try it again. And there's our function f of x. You get a point of inflection at negative 265, and then 1x intercept and 1y intercept. Alrighty. So that's a slightly harder cubic to sketch. Alrighty, see you in the next one.